Woven with big city dreams and small town scenes, Willie Wood's preservation in Canton was the result of perseverance in Wisconsin. I started off in Green Bay with just one thing in mind, that is the making the Green Bay Packers football team, and ladies and gentlemen, that's all I had in mind. That was it for me. I was a quarterback at Southern Cal, and uh, there were a lot of people who didn't think perhaps maybe I should have been. And um, I got hit upside the head a couple of times because of that. Hit upside the head turned into a slap across the face when Wood, as one of college football's only black quarterbacks, went undrafted following his senior season. For me to get an opportunity to pursue professional football, I really didn't care as to what position I was going in at. So Wood wrote letters to pro teams expressing a willingness to play only defense. One such letter landed on the desk of Green Bay's head coach. It was the uh, late great Vince Lombardi that gave him the challenge that if he could touch the uprights on the goalpost, he would certainly give him an opportunity. So Willie, with his tenacity, his will to play, he probably could have did a cartwheel over the goalpost if Vince would have asked him. He may be the only guy that uh, was a walk-on ball player, and he was such a great walk-on, he walked right into the Hall of Fame. All pro six straight years, five times world champion. Wood's talent was unmistakable even at his first training camp. After a couple of practices, I said, this guy is unbelievable. I mean, Willie Wood was one of the best pure tacklers I've ever seen. Vince Lombardi was probably laughing up his sleeve at thinking those other guys, they think they know what they're doing, and here I got Willie Wood. Lombardi knew that he had a Willie Wood on the field. He knew that he had the best, the best, uh, defensive back on the field. The men who wanted to stay, they're still here. And let me tell you this, Green Bay is a great town for football. Well, Green Bay was a small town, a very small town. The people were very friendly and uh, I felt pretty good at my, you know, my being there. And of course, my purpose of being there was, uh, was football and that's about really what I focused on. I went there in 1960 and, and Willie was a rookie that year. I honestly think before that, they had never had more than three black players on the team at, in, at any one time. There weren't any blacks in Green Bay at all. They had a guy at uh, one of the hotels, you know, who shined shoes and what have you. Other than that, that was it, you know. Anytime you got homesick and you want to mingle with some of your own kind, we had to go to Milwaukee, and we did that quite often. Still in Wisconsin, black and white color distinctions have always run second to green and gold. Green Bay was strictly Packer oriented. I mean, everybody was a Green Bay Packer fan and, and everybody knew who you were. It was like being in a fishbowl. Wherever you showed up, it was not that people were disrespectful, but you could always tell that there was some curiosity about, you know, you as not only as a Packer, but as a black player. Each year, it really got progressively better. And pretty soon we had not only three players, we had probably a, a third and then almost half of the club was uh, African Americans. We were winning and I think all of those things started to change the whole dynamics even with some other clubs. You go down to dais and it's an entirely different uh, picture and I can't, sometimes I'm wondering whether or not I'm in the right place You know, when I, when I pull in. I'm still very acquainted to Green Bay. We own and operate a restaurant up there. So I'm up there about once every two, maybe three weeks, you know, and uh, it's like second home for me. And 